All right, well, let's let's kick things off. So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Rodriguez and I'm the Community Engagement Manager for Toronto Arts Foundation. I'm so delighted to be co-hosting the session today and I'm thrilled uh, that you all could join us. I'm also thrilled to introduce my colleague, Tash, who will be co-hosting the session with me. Tash, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure do. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, I am the outgoing program manager of the Indigenous Arts Program at the Toronto Arts Council. And um, I have been assisting in the development of the 2021 Indigenous Artist Award that we'll talk about. Um, I'm Dene, I'm Eastern European, and I grew up in, and I'm a member of Anishinaabe Community of Metogamy First Nation in Treaty 9 Territory. I'm happy to be here today um, to share about this new award. All right, so everyone knows we're recording this session today so that we can make it available for folks uh, who could not could not be here. Uh, as you also notice, we're joined by Marcia Adolf, who is providing ASL for this session. And if you like, you can pin her to your screen by right clicking and selecting pin. So that'll make sure that she does not disappear um, as, as speakers come on and off. Now, wherever you are, I hope that everyone is doing well. It's been a really challenging year uh, and a bit for so many. And for so many reasons, I hope that you are safe uh, at home. I've been thinking a lot about home over the last year and a half and how lucky I am to have a home, a safe one, and a second home, a home at my parents' house. And I recognize that my home sits on the territories of the Huron-Wendat, the Anishinaabe Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Thinking about home, I am also reminded by the recent discoveries speaking to a shameful history. 215 children, another 104, thousands. The number is increasing each day. Children that were taken from and unable to return to their homes. We have an urgent need in this country to address the historic rendoings of our society and the need to address the systemic racism that continues to shape the everyday lives of indigenous communities. At the Toronto Arts Council and the Toronto Arts Foundation, we're committed to dismantling these structures of systemic racism that continue to exist. Although our new Indigenous Artists Award that we'll be speaking about today is one step towards supporting and amplifying Toronto's extraordinary indigenous artists and arts collectives, we know that we still have a lot of work to do. We're continuing to work with our artists, our arts workers, our partners and sponsors through our grant programs, our awards and other resources to bring down these oppressive structures by continuing to amplify indigenous artists and lend our voices as advocates in solidarity with indigenous communities. Next slide, please. Today's agenda is fairly straightforward. Today we'll be speaking about two Toronto Arts Foundation awards that are currently accepting nominations. First, I'll talk about the Toronto Arts Foundation awards in general. Following that, Tash is gonna take over and walk us through the history of the Indigenous Artists Award, how it was created, eligibility, and the nomination process. After that, Tash will hand back the proverbial microphone, and I'll have the pleasure of introducing past Community Arts Award recipient, Miss Coco Colette Murray, to say a few words about the impact of receiving the award and nominating. She was a recipient in 2019. Following that, I'll talk a bit about the eligibility and the nomination process for the Community Arts Award. We'll finish off this session by addressing a few frequently asked questions, and then there'll be times for questions at the end uh, that we may have not answered. If you like, you can submit your questions uh, throughout the session using the Q&A function or in the chat. We'll keep an eye on that too. All right, with that, off we go. Next slide, please, Alexandra. All right, so first things first, what are the Toronto Arts Foundation Awards? Well, our awards are cash awards that are presented annually to artists, cultural leaders, and businesses in recognition of artistic excellence, cultural leadership, and contribution to the arts. The goal of the awards program is to shine a spotlight on artistic excellence and to celebrate our creative community. 
And it's really under, important here to understand that these awards um, are presented and funded through Toronto Arts Foundation, not Toronto Arts Council. Unlike TAC grants, our awards are funded through sponsors and donors, not the city of Toronto. So it's very important to note that these awards are not grants. But what does that mean, you ask? Well, on the next slide, we'll talk about it. Uh, so the purpose, oh, I guess we'll go next slide again. Sorry about that, folks. So there's a few things that are the key differentiators here. First of all, it's the purpose. The purpose of the awards is to really celebrate our finalists and our recipients. Well, it may be a cause for celebration if you receive a grant, Unlike a grant, there is no need for a final report if you receive an award. There's no need to produce something with the award money. This is an award for you. The good news is too, unlike a grant, the nomination process is fairly simple and easy. And finally, unlike grant income, award money is also non-taxable. Next slide, please. Now, like grants, we don't make the decision about who wins the awards. Like the grant assessment panels, we have award assessment panels that are made up of arts practitioners, arts workers, uh, critics, curators, volunteers, and more. In the case of the Indigenous Artists Award, the panel will be made up of Indigenous assessors. Now, Tash, I think it's your turn to speak about the new Indigenous Artists Award. It is, thank you. Um, so to start, I'd like to talk about the history of how this award came to be, and uh, we'll just go to the next slide. Um, so it's brand new. This award has been in the works for over a year, though. Um, KM Hunter Foundation came to the Toronto Arts Foundation with the hopes of funding a new award, and uh, we're so grateful. Um, in terms of the creation of the award last year, we spent a lot of time working with members of the Indigenous arts community via a series of surveys, um, online focus groups, and consulted with uh, the Indigenous Arts Advisory Committee um, to better understand how this award could best serve the creative community. Uh, through these conversations, the award amounts, the eligibility, and the process were guided and shaped. And I thank, uh, thank you to all those who supported the consultation process for this award. Next slide. So the Toronto Arts uh, Foundation uh, Indigenous Artist Award is a $20,000 cash prize with um, professional artist, mentor, elder, or mentee, protege designated by the award recipient to receive $5,000. Uh, the award recognizes an Indigenous professional artist or arts artist collective working in traditional or contemporary practices and who have uh, contributed significantly to the arts and culture in Toronto and have demonstrated an ongoing association with Toronto. The um, award will be, be presented every year um, at an event co-hosted by Toronto Arts Foundation and a Toronto arts organization with a mandate to support Indigenous artists. This year, it's being co-presented by Imaginative Film and Media Arts Festival. So thank you to them for partnering with us on the presentation. Next slide. Um, so eligibility, um, both individual artists and arts collectives are eligible to receive this award. Uh, to be eligible, individual artist nominees must be indigenous. So First Nations, Métis and Inuit uh, in this context. Um, they must have demonstrated an ongoing association with Toronto. Uh, they must have uh, contributed significantly to the arts and culture of Toronto, and they must be living at the time of the selection. Um, so next, to be eligible to, um, as a creative, uh, collective nominees must be headquartered in Toronto and have a significant portion of activity taking place in the city and they must have uh, contributed significantly, again, to the arts and culture of Toronto. So next slide. And it's important to note um, that, sorry, <laughs> I'm missing a note here about self-nomination. So uh, you are, um, 
you may self-nominate. Uh, so uh, on our app, online application form, you will see um, how it's written out there, but you can self-nominate or you can nominate somebody else. Um, but another thing to note is that undergraduate and college students are not eligible to apply to this award and individuals um, are not eligible to nominate or receive Toronto Arts Foundation Award while serving as an executive board member or staff of the Toronto Arts Foundation or Arts Council. Um, but one thing that's great about this award, uh, which makes the nomination process even easier, is that individuals and collectives may self-nominate for the award, which I just said. Um, uh, yes, and uh, the thing to note about that is that uh, you will be asked uh, to provide a letter of reference uh, for this particular award. Uh, next slide. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the Community Arts Award. So the Community Arts Award is uh, it's presented by our Neighborhood Arts Network Initiative. I'm sure a few folks uh, joining us today uh, know uh, our colleagues over there. Um, and it's a $10,000 cash prize with finalists receiving $1,000. And the award celebrates an individual artist or organization that has made a significant contribution in Toronto by working collaboratively with culturally diverse communities and creating access to arts and culture. Um, so each year the award rotates one year to an individual artist and then the next year to an organization. Um, so past winners of this award include Jamie in 2020, Miss Coco Colette Marie in 2019, Urban Arts in 2018, Cyrus Marcus Ware in 2017, and although it's not on the slide here, previous to that, uh, Regent Park Film Festival were the recipients in 2016. And so this year, the award is going to be presented to an individual. And now we are pleased to have 2019's Community Arts Award recipient, Miss Coco Murray here to tell us a little bit more about the impact of the award. It's also great because uh, Ms. Coco was a self-nominator. So, so like the Indigenous Artists Award, this award you may self-nominate for. So it's great to, to have her here. So Ms. Coco, welcome. Let's go to the next slide and throw that beautiful picture up. And uh, I'll hand over the proverbial microphone to you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, what I wanted to say about the impact of this award, it was it was a surprise that I won. So I, even though I self nominated, you know, stepped away from the application, went on with my busy life as an artist, as an artistic director of a collective. And then when I got the phone call, I didn't even react. I was actually silent because it was a really, it was a shock. Um, I would say the impact also came at a time where I was going through a family situation. My father had passed. So it was fairly like on the heels of preparing for that funeral. And then even when the actual award, when I won the award, it was just after the burial, like the actual home going. So it was impactful that after, because the thing I would say is, the self nomination process, it was just presenting the work that I've done over the past 25 years. And, and it's just simply presenting all the layers of work that I had did. And even going through the process, you, sometimes you learn that I did all of these things really, <laughs> because it was uh, my CV is substantially a lot <laughs> still growing, but it was um, just articulating my commitment to the community and working in communities and supporting the diaspora and sharing what I'm learning internationally and nationally with the communities and neighborhoods and spaces and schools, et cetera, um, through whether it's recreational, whether it is through an arts program, whether it's through my own programming that I create. Um, it's just sharing the importance of being part of an ecosystem and that art is part of social life 
and making connections with people and sharing that work. So when I got the award, I would also say it was, it, I was very grateful. I felt affirmed. I felt that peers recognized my um, efforts because I know I dedicated a lot towards the work that I do to the point where people may not get to see me all the time, but if you're in my artistic role, you'll see me a lot. So um, the sacrifices that one makes to do their artistic career, I would say when you receive such an award, it is quite affirming and it's very special. And it also helped uh, me to realize there's more that I can do. So even though I was at the last in-person event, that um we had and was completely shocked and i cried when i got the award um a few months later of course we were in the pandemic so in order to actualize what i wanted to do with the actual award i wasn't able to do so because we were in lockdown so i would say there are some plans that i'm going to make with using the award in terms to advancing my knowledge base, travel, professional development, and then funneling it back into some more community arts initiatives. So there are plans to be made. Um, this, I was just on pause because of the pandemic. But I would, I would encourage applicants to simply self-nominate, um, add any reference letters, letters of support from people that you have worked with and just simply if you haven't had an opportunity it's an exercise to really um, consolidate all of the activities that you've done within your career and actually being put forth so the fact that um i believe mod development is the sponsor for this award i'm very grateful to them and even having a chance to meet them in person and actually to attend the mayor's arts awards with them as well um, so I, it's great to have sponsors, corporate sponsors that value us as artists. This initiative is very important because sometimes you, you do your work and you, people just don't realize how much is involved in, in being a community art artist focused on community arts, which is separate to being on concert stages and different theater and live spaces. So the fact that this award is here to acknowledge those who are um, doing very impactful work in, in many neighborhoods across Toronto, because we have a large city, um, I think this is a very important award to have. And I would say just put your best, uh, best effort forward to self nominate or to have someone nominate you and throw your hat in the ring you never know what happens because that's simply what happened in my case so i'm very appreciative to toronto arts foundation and i acknowledge them in in, in everything that i'm doing and i'm very grateful that to be a recipient as well as to share in the following year i was a juror assessing for the 2020 award as well so I was able to see the other side of it as well and to contribute to um, that process as well, to nominate someone that, which is Jam I as well. So yes, it's an excellent award. Please nominate yourself. And um, for all the nominees, even if you don't win, you're doing impactful work. You can always apply again. So I always encourage that as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And a shameless plug that uh, we did, uh, Ms. Coco wrote a beautiful kind of Q&A blog post um, for International Dance Day for us um, in April. And so if you want to visit our Toronto Arts Foundation website, it's right there on the homepage. So you can learn more about, about her work and, and all, all of the thoughts on just how important dance is to, to our city. So thank you so much for, for joining us today. And Stick around in case uh, we have some questions at the end. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now on to the eligibility for the Community Arts Award. Alexandra, can you hit the next slide there? Perfect. So to be eligible for the award, uh, all individual nominees must demonstrate a commitment or focus on community engaged arts and access to arts and culture in the city. In addition, 
individual nominees must be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident and be a Toronto-based professional artist. So just like the Indigenous Artist Award, you are welcome to self-nominate for this award too, uh, as we've, we've just learned. Um, I should also say, I, and I was thinking about this, that I'm so excited for the next time we do a session like this in 2021, talking about the Indigenous Artist Award, and we'll be able to invite the first recipient of, um, of that and this inaugural uh, Indigenous Artist Award to, to speak about the nomination process and their experience. Um, it's really exciting to think about that time coming forward. Uh, all right, so let's hit the next slide there. Now, Tasha did uh, note uh, on this a little bit, but just to reiterate, because we do get this uh, a lot uh, in, in questions, for both the Community Arts Award and the Indigenous Artist Award, uh, you know, no person or collective may be selected for more than one Toronto Arts Foundation Award within any given year. No person or collective may receive the same Toronto Arts Foundation Award twice. Now that doesn't mean that you could be considered for a, diff, you know, a different Toronto Arts Foundation Award in the future. Finally, again, it's important to note, as Tash mentioned, that folks are not eligible to nominate or receive Toronto Arts Foundation Awards while serving as an executive board member or staff of the foundation or the council. We can't go giving an award to ourselves now, can we? I don't think that would be great. Uh, next slide, and, and Tash, would you like to talk about the nomination process a little bit? For sure. Um, so the nomination process um, has been simplified and is an ongoing process uh, to um, be responsive to accessibility needs. Um, but to nominate someone, including yourself, you just uh, visit the Toronto Arts Foundation nomination portal. So again, very different from the Toronto Arts Council portal, the Toronto Arts Foundation portal. Um, you go to the link there, which is smartsimple.ca, welcome, and then TAF. So that's how you know you're going to the right one is it's TAF. Um, and it's very important to, um, if you wanna know that you're on the right page, you can just uh, you know call one of us up too if you are stuck finding anything. Um, to register uh, an account uh, on the TAF nomination portal um, or sign into your existing account. Uh, once you're in the portal, there are a series of fields that need filling out. So um, for all awards, the questions are very similar. Uh, information um, requested will include a nomination uh, rationale, um, your name and contact info um, of your nominee includes yourself, um, a biography, um, and any accompanying uh, support material in the form of visual, audio, or text-based attachments. Um, and that's it. So it's a fairly straightforward uh, process. Um, but yeah, uh, back to you, Jackson. Perfect. Next slide. So this is when we get in some frequently asked questions. So Alexandra, I'm gonna ask you to hit like the space bar a couple of times, uh, just so you're aware. Uh, so here's the first one. I tried to log into the nomination portal, but I cannot find the awards you mentioned. So right now, if you go to, you know, smart, simple slash welcome slash TAF, um, and you log in, you should be able to see all the awards that are open and accepting nominations. So you'll see the Indigenous Artists Award and the Community Arts Award. But in this case, you've logged in and you can't see it. All right. Enter or spacebar Alexandra. So create a nominator login. If you've applied for a TAC grant before, the system will default to your TAC Smart Simple account. As Tash mentioned, if you're still having trouble, contact us. More often than not, um, the system is confusing your your kind of your grant login versus your award login. So that's usually the problem. And with a simple fix, uh, we'll get you going. All right, next and. I want to be nominated, but I don't want to nominate myself. Can I ask someone to nominate me? Of course you can. Ask a peer, a trusted colleague, a friend, your mom. Um, you know, self-nomination um, is, is really great. There, there, you know, this is one way that we're trying to make these awards more accessible. But if you prefer to be nominated by someone else, you absolutely should ask 
someone. So, so don't be afraid to ask. All right, next slide. All right. So can multiple people nominate me or my collective for the same award in the same year? And does it make it more likely that I'll win? So yes, you can definitely have multiple people nominate you or your collective. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. There's a lot of things that will go into to that and, and the awards assessors will look. I mean, if you have 10 nominations, but the, the nominations have not, they're not written very strongly. I mean, that's not necessarily going to result in, you know, a, a, you know, a, a win from, from the assessors. All right, next. How about for two different awards in a year? So yes, you can be nominated, uh, you know, for two different awards. But remember, uh, recall what we said before, that you can only win one award per year. Next slide. So wait a minute, you've been listening to this presentation, but what do I actually need to prepare for the nominating process? The answer, well, along with the name of the individual or the collective you are nominating, which may be yourself, the form will also ask for a biography or you know, a collective company description, a nomination rationale, a resume, CV, and accompanying support material in the form of visual, audio, or text-based attachments, and an optional support letter. However, as Tash mentioned, support letters are not optional if you are self-nominating for the Indigenous Artist Award. One other question that we get a lot with this um, is how many pieces. Uh, the fields allow for three um, support materials to be uploaded plus that uh, uh, support, support letter. Um, it's mandatory to at least upload one of those like first three support materials pieces. Uh, the other question popped up quickly, so you got a sneak peek, but should I tell my nominee that I'm nominating them? So I know that it's a wonderful surprise for someone to find out that they've been nominated, but I personally uh, would recommend um, telling, telling your nominee that, that you are nominating them. And the reason for that simply is that they might have an updated biography or resume, stronger support material that you might, that you might have access to. Um, you know, obviously there, there's no right or wrong. I, I would just suggest um, uh, speaking with them because you wanna put the best nomination forward. Okay, next slide. Oh, maybe the next slide's not popping up. Oh, here we go. I'm not nominating someone. So this is a question that we get, got so much last year. So I'm nominating someone, you know, I'm the nominator. Am I also supposed to write the letter of support that's requested along with the other support material? So the answer to this is that we suggest you find another supportive peer or colleague to write the letter and it may strengthen the nomination. So the reason I say that is that if you're a nominator, so again, not self-nominating, if you're a nominator, you're likely the person writing that rationale for the nomination, which means that, you know, in a, in a letter of support, it's kind of a rationale as well. And so by asking someone else to write that support letter, you're, you know, you're, you're really showing that two people are kind of nominating, if you know what I mean. Uh, next slide. Tash, did you want to answer these questions? I, I'm happy to, too. Totally up to you. Uh, sure. Yeah, I can Great. answer these in the last two. Um, so some other for this new award, um, the Indigenous Artist Award, um, some things that I kind of realized might be a question in folks' minds and how how it's worded. So one of the um, eligib eligibility criteria is must have demonstrated an ongoing association with Toronto. So um, you might ask, what does that look like? Um, so the answer, <laughs> Um, you know, is, is probably going to look different uh, for some folks, but um, if you share your living and working time between Toronto, some folks have now, especially during the pandemic, have moved back to their home communities or surrounding communities to Toronto. Um, so you, uh, you might still be an artist working in Toronto, collaborating with, um, producing work in, or 
presenting and exhibiting in Toronto or are, are going to again. Um, and if you have done that on a consistent basis over your career as an artist, then you would still be eligible for this award. Um, and then another question might be around, uh, similarly, uh, what must have contributed significantly to the arts and culture of Toronto uh, look like? Um, and the answer is, uh, this will largely be determined by the awards peer assessment panel. Um, as an artist, uh, you might be recognized by your peers, um, artists working in the same artistic tradition, of course, through your artistic strength and achievement and um, have a history of public presentation, publication, or production that is seen as a contribution to and the development of arts and culture in Toronto by your peers. So um, hopefully that helps uh, give more insight into those eligibility criteria. That's really great, Tash. Uh, one question we also get is, um, I'm a nominator, I don't live in Toronto, can I still nominate? The answer is yes. Um, we've had folks submit nominations who are right now living like literally over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, do, do I have to have a, uh, you know, an M postal code? Um, no, but it's back to that ongoing association with Toronto contributing significantly to Toronto, um, you know, this is an expensive city to live in and not everybody, not everybody can live in this city. And so um, at the foundation, um, unlike, uh, you know, grants, again, here's another differentiating factor. You don't have to have that M postal code, um, which is really great. So we've come to the end of our a bit formal presentation here. And I know I have, I see one question um, here. Uh, so the question is, is it okay to have your partner, who is also a colleague, write a letter of support, or is that being seen as bias? I would say no, that would be my interpretation. What do you think, Tash? So say the question again. Sure. It's is it okay to have your partner, who is also a colleague, write a letter of support, or is that being seen as bias? Thanks. It's more about the colleague part, right? Yeah, because before we said your mom can write your nomination letter. So if your mom can write your nomination letter, your partner could too. But, um, but I think it's like, if they work with the person, we do have something in our, in our um, criteria too, that says that like the letter can't be from your workplace or something like that. So I would say no <laughs> as well. And I guess it depends too, if you're an individual or a collective, right? Correct. So that would also determine, determine that. Um, but also don't forget that you can um, call us uh, when you're putting together your nomination, just like you would if you're applying for a grant to ask these questions too, and to really walk through specifically um, these details as well. don't see any other questions so far. So we'll hold and we'll ask for a last call for questions. Maybe while we wait to see if anyone has any additional questions, um, Ms. Coco, why don't, you know, I don't wanna presume that you've written um, grant applications to the TAC, uh, but if you have, um, you know, I know, I know, um, I know that you receive grant money, but sometimes other, other folks write the grant applications. But if you have, can you maybe pull back in the recess of your brain, like putting together a grant application versus putting together your nomination and, and what that was like? Sure. Can everybody see me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I'm unable to see myself in the screen, that's why. Um, I would say, yeah, so actually I do write all of my grants for myself and the collective. Um, so the difference between the two really lies in answering the questions. I had to like answer the nomination questions from a third party perspective. 
And that was hard because I'm self-nominating. So I'm stepping back and reading the question and just saying to myself, well, how would I create a, a rationale about why the work should be nominated? So I really had to step out of myself and take it from a third party perspective. Um, of course, you don't have to think about, you know, particular um, budgets and things like that. But I would say <clears throat> it go, it's a different level than just creating an artistic statement. It's definitely not the same. Um, you're talking about your body of work versus answering a question about a particular project you're applying for. So if you're looking at it from two different lens, lenses and you're also thinking about impact of the work to the sectors and to the communities that you're serving. That's key. You're, you're expanding on that more, I think, in a nomination and the self nomination than you would do in a grant. That's great. Thank you. So I think we have one more question. This question is, should you include any arts grants that you've received in the past on your CV? What do you think, Tash? Sorry. That's okay. I can repeat the question. Should you include any arts grants you have received in the past on your CV? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because those are, you are, even though they're grants, you were awarded those grants. You did a lot of work to write that grant application and you were recognized for your project. Um, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a big achievement. So yeah, definitely include that. Great, thanks. I, I can add to that answer as well. I would also say yes, because it is it does speak to your body of work. You've been assessed by peers, you've been assessed by the council. So it speaks to the type of work that you do and the communities that you serve. So yes, add that to your CV because that's part of who you are in your artistry. I think that's the best answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Now, I don't see any other questions popping up here, but is there anything else, Tash, that you want to add before we slowly um, draw this uh, session to a close? Just that, um, you know, if there's any questions along the way in the process, if you um, are hesitant at all about applying to the Indigenous Artist Award, that, um, well, I'm only here until the end of the week, but a new me will appear and uh, be available to answer all these questions as well. And in the interim, actually, my colleague Cole um, is around. Uh, it's just Cole at torontoartscouncil.ca to also um, fill in with uh, answering any of your questions. Um, but the portal is open. You can jump in and uh, register if you want to um, just look at it, look at the process and do a pre-draft. Um, so yeah, feel free to do that. That's great. Thanks, Tash. And um, for questions about the Community Arts Award, they'll be directed to our colleague, Angie Aranda, which is angie at torontoarts.org. Um, and we'll put that, before I do end this, we'll put that contact information in the chat. Though I did throw in the nomination deadline, which for both awards is August 16th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and uh, that link there actually directs you straight to all of the eligibility, everything that we spoke about for the most part today um, and, uh, and contact information is on that page as well. Um, so, so you should be able to find who you need. And if not, uh, you know, anybody at the Toronto Arts Council or Foundation will be able to redirect your email. So just reach out, we're here to help. We want folks to succeed. We know, you know, at the end of the day, we're just really excited to give out these prizes. That's really what it's about for us. So we want everybody to succeed and, and there's, there's really no silly questions. Um, so, so feel free to ask them all. I think with that, I'm going to look one more time at the Q&A and the chat. It looks like we have no other questions. So I think with that, um, I think we're done a little bit early, uh, which is 
always better than running over time. So, so thank you so much um, to Marcia, to Miss Coco. Thank you to the behind the scenes, Alexandra, for jumping in and helping run the PowerPoint. Um, thank you so much, Tash, uh, for co-hosting this session with me. You will be so missed at our organizations. But what a wonderful, beautiful award that you've started. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that you've, you've brought to our organization. Well, and thanks again to KM Hunter. I mean, they're the, the ones with the, the pockets too. So also, yeah, big shout out to particularly Sarah Hunter over at KM Hunter. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody. And with that, I will say, I'll, I'll say goodbye. Thank you. And, and apply, 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 nominate. <laughs> Go for it. Thank you so much. <laughs>